Believe it or not, everything you do today can be considered a red flag by a woman. You treat her right, that's a red flag. You treat her like Chad, that's a red flag. You do something exactly as she wanted it, that's a red flag. You don't do what she wanted, that's a red flag as well. Chances are your wife or your girlfriend has already discussed two dozen red flags about you with her girlfriends, and she will have all of those at the back of her mind whenever she's having a conversation with you. The idea behind the red flag. One thing that stands out in today's dating market is that women want to get the girlfriend treatment without the girlfriend restrictions. Many women still want traditional dates and men to engage in chivalry. However, they don't want to be exclusive or virtuous in return. I think women generally don't have a clue what they want at any given time on any day. They get influenced by social media trends and they get completely hooked with what's happening in their social circles. If her friend says a man buying her a bouquet of flowers is a red flag, she's going to believe it. And whether she liked receiving flowers from you before, doesn't matter now. Because now, it is a major red flag. For me, if anyone dates for years without finding someone and getting married or at least committing themselves solely to that one person, that's the biggest red flag. If it takes you years to get it right, there's something very wrong with you. And yeah, that goes for guys and girls. It's not hard, people. To the younger generation of men, you're going to find that what women say they want, what they will not allow and put up with, and what they do in actuality seldom aligns with what they say. If you exist, you have red flags. If you're human, you have problems. It's going to be really interesting seeing all of the old folks' homes full of incels who gave up on dating because of the impossible hoops combined with women who had impossible standards. The women who claim they go on multiple dates a day and 28 dates in a month have to be unemployed and funded by their parents. Not only that, but it takes time to swipe and message. I don't know of any working adults that have that kind of time. The nature of modern women. Life must be exciting for women. Women are presumed innocent until proven guilty, whereas males are presumed guilty unless proven innocent. Today, it's more often guilty even when proven innocent and innocent even when proven guilty, which is a shame. Women soon started to complain about things like compliments, dating pressures, and even guys who looked at them. Men then started to disregard them after giving them what they wanted. They now bemoan the lack of interest. This is evidence that they lack direction. In reality, not all women aim to undermine all males. The crucial problem is that, in this gynocentric society, any woman may, if she so chooses, ruin any man's means of subsistence. All it takes is one accusation to destroy the guys. Let's not forget how the absurd Believe All Women movement was included in the Me Too movement. I think the movement has openly opposed males ever since that day. They came up with this ineffective, misogynistic rule of behavior. Men are shrewdly adapted to a culture that forces them to play a predetermined, rigged game. The majority of guys have just chosen the prudent course and will not use a marked deck. I think a lot of males feel the same way about women these days because of the way they act. Their conduct has just gotten to the point where I find it difficult to carry on a discussion with them for very long before I get bored of hearing from them. However adorable they may look, it won't change how utterly irritating and immature they have grown to be. Men just steer clear of anything that can be even slightly misinterpreted and cause them to get into trouble. Why the red flags? So why do women find red flags in everything that men do? I think one of the most important reasons behind this is the concept of hypergamy. It's all about convenience and nature. Convenience, because they need a place to dump emotional baggage, indulge in the feelings of revenge if applicable, and most likely are applicable if they felt the need to leave. If they were leaving because the grass was greener, they feel more desirable. If they are with someone, as opposed to lonely, sad, depressed, and with little sense of direction. Also, not to be understated, the thrill of lustful conquest is a driving force until they decide to love someone. Many will argue this last point, but love is something you do, more so than something you feel. The way hypergamy operates is that it is incredibly difficult for women to resist since it is deeply ingrained in the culture. She may, for instance, announce or be in a monogamous relationship with you. Researchers have claimed that secret infidelity rather than monogamy is the worldwide standard. In essence, it is how much of the West operates. But let's put that aside for the time being. Using social media to advertise a business, for example, 
is not what she is doing if she is on social media and publishes often and consistently. So she is marketing herself as the business, or to be more precise, as the product. Therefore, it's a hazardous warning if you notice her posting frequently, especially if they are attractive selfies or begging for the attention of others on a regular basis. But even if it weren't, if there were regularly scheduled articles begging for interaction, how would you feel about this? Your thoughts on this, please. Here is a poll. Click here to reply. Send me your comments. In a sense, her phone is attracting other men's attention. She's doing everything she can to put herself out there and interact with other men. And we know this because she isn't interacting with the women. Women aren't trying to get in her DMs on Instagram. It's the men. We often don't feel like doing what loving someone would require us to do, but that is how we know we truly love someone and why we do it. What are men thinking? Studies show that men would rather work with other men than with women. This only serves to demonstrate how increasingly wary males have become of women throughout time, especially in the last 10 years, and how much they would prefer to communicate and work with other guys. In cubicles, meetings, and boardrooms, they prefer to work with other males rather than women because they can share information, talk about ideas, and organize their schedules together. This is due to their fear of losing the career they have worked so hard to build over a long period of time. They may lose everything with just one unfounded accusation. In a society that primarily takes into account and believes what women say, one false charge could end up being the villain. Throughout their lives, Men are supposed to do everything for women and literally dedicate their lives to providing for, protecting, and helping women. And you know what? Men do that with honor. They do it proudly because that's in their nature. I'm talking about high-value men, not a simp who starts crying if he gets rejected by a girl. But the question is, why is it that women expect everything from a man, especially when all they can do now is talk about equality and how men have oppressed them and controlled them? If you go online, or if you hang out with a bunch of females, you'll always hear them talk about the so-called red flags in men, but never about their own red flags. You see, in their minds, they're perfect. They can do no wrong and are always right about what they're thinking. There's no escaping the red flag conundrum. It's in their DNA. Thanks for watching Man Reacts. Show us your love and support by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Support us and help us spread support for men around the world. Do comment and share your thoughts. We're always up for a healthy debate and discussion. The debate.